Okay. A quick feature overview of the, the basics, like positional audio. Um, in Unreal Engine 1 and 2, we use that the hardware do the spatialization and attenuation, but in Unreal Engine 3, we decided to go with an entirely software based approach. And the reasoning is um, we can do very good prioritization based on actual volume, so distance space and things like that. And uh, that also allows us to do a lot of nice tricks where we can make sure we never use more than 32 sounds or 32 channels. Um, the default gives of worship with a maximum uh, channel count of 32, which seems fairly low, but uh, the prioritization scheme worked out really well, so that allowed us to cut down quite a bit there. A couple of tricks we, knowing the vol actual volume of the plate sound, allowed us to use a couple of tricks, like if a volume, uh, if a one shot sound, which is like a weapon sh shot, is below a certain threshold, we don't even play it. That allows, in, especially in performance critical scenarios where there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, doing it in software means also the attenuation, which is different between, in, in hardware, between different vendors and different platforms, to be completely uh, vendor agnostic and cross platform. So, what is also authored on the PC sounds the same on uh, Xbox and PS3 or different uh, sound cards. It also allowed us to use custom distance models. Um, most sound designers um, or level designers who are placing our uh, audio find it quite hard to uh, visualize the one over distance squared model. So we went with a linear distance model and added a couple of other ones, more esoteric. We're looking at hardware mostly as a high quality mixing console. So where the positions control the HRT, HRTF spatialization, the distance and attenuation is done via a setting gain, and the filters are used for um, obstruction and absorption and other modeling like this to further enhance the quality, but not drastically uh, change the sound. Um, audio compression is a big... Uh, we never compressed audio in the, pa audio in the past in Unreal Engine 1 or 2, but um, gears ship with roughly 60 minutes of audio at any, in memory at any given time, and uh, it's 80 minutes if you count channels, for example, take into account stereos. So on all platforms that support hardware decompression or hardware assisted decompression, we compress all sounds in the um, platform native format. On platforms that don't support that, like the PC, we um, still compress all sounds, but uh, we decompress on load. And why we, how we compress and why we compress is a little bit different. So we currently have a size and usage threshold for decompression where if a sound is longer than 5 seconds, for example, it will be um, streamed to the device, otherwise we fully decompress on load. An optimization or potential change there is we're planning to play with um, maintaining a least recently used cache for decompressed audio. And the reason for that is um, OCK or other compressions are fairly, fairly CPU intensive. We did some performance testing using OCK, which got us actually quite a good compression. It's 10 to 1 for a usage, uh, for a quality level that is acceptable to our sound designers, and it takes roughly 2 milliseconds per channel per second. What this roughly means is, if you have 50 channels, it, it costs you 3.3 milliseconds per frame at 30 hertz. So on average, this is not too bad, but um, the bad cases are spikes when um, multiple sounds are played in the same frame, which is often the case during firefights, which is why we're looking into the least recent use cache. Um, DSP effects are uh, main feature edition where we, in Unreal Engine 2, we allowed uh, the level designer full control over all settings, which meant um, ports to console where certain features weren't the same or sounded different were quite hard because the sound changed a bit. So in order to uh, fix the, this time around, we just allow presets. The level designer or audio designer in the game can't actually um, change the minor the, in the i3DL2 model, you can't change the parameters, you can't just pick between like stone room or things like that, but he can change what the presets mean on a global level, just not on each individual instance. We also have a filter presets, the reverb presets are basically used to model acoustic environment if you're in a cave, if you're in a small room or if you're in a large room. We have filter presets, which are global presets as well, but those are mostly uh, triggered by code, for example, um, if a grenade co goes off next to you, we have a special filter for this. We also have uh, filters for if you die and things like that. The level designer basically praises the pre or you makes use of the presets and maps, and the sound designer is usually the one that um, modifies it globally. We support reverb um, across the board with i3DL2 presets. We can select which source has it applied to. 
but uh, the presets are for listeners, so we can only have one active at any given time. Um, we support an equalizer, it's currently hardware only on the PC, it's a low pen, band pass, high pass filter. Um, same old preset for listener, but it also affects the group volume, so this is for effects like uh, the grenade or things like that. Um, like the reverb, we can select which source has applied on RBS sound grouping. In addition to that, we have a special low pass filter that is implemented in software on the PC and other platforms that allows uh, the setting to be per source, so you can add special muffling based on a distance attenuation or special effects. Um, streaming audio, most, most games stream audio, Gears of War actually ship without a zero latency streaming or any significant sound streaming. Our budget was, technically we didn't have a budget, but we ended up shipping with roughly 30 to 40 megabytes of audio always loaded. This was due to the interaction with a level of texture streaming, which took precedence. Our texture budget was roughly 140 megabyte and the level streaming is the high, was the highest priority. So it went level streaming, used the majority of the DVD throughput. The texture streaming caused us to do a lot of seeks, which wouldn't have allowed zero latency streaming. Um, if required, if you, we could have done a couple of things, like uh, the engine supports seamless package streaming, where any combination of assets can be bundled in a package and loaded asynchronously which means audio was treated like any other asset, like animation, meshes, and things like that. But we could have combined uh, and loaded multiple sounds in the sound bank, for example, all dialogue for a certain character, and have the garbage collection team uh, be responsible for removing the data. For Gears, we had a couple of possible solutions with localizations. We could have been one of the first multiple DVD games on Xbox, but we would have had to deal with DVD swapping and the related TCRs, so we decided not to go with that. The DVD per region was another, was another option we looked at, but uh, it would have meant required uh, submitting and testing several builds, which could have pushed us a little bit further out. So we ended up deciding to go with a worldwide DVD, um, which meant disk space was at a premium, um, because localized audio ended up consuming a lot of space. In Gears of War, out of the 6.8 gigabyte on the DVD, we had 3.5 gigabyte dedicated for six languages. Each uh, new language roughly added 3 to 400 megabyte, and there was some duplication to avoid seeking, which explains the 3.5 gigabyte in the end, and ambient sounds and other sources and music that uh, weren't localized. Speech recognition and text to speech, as mentioned earlier, Unreal Engine 2 used the Microsoft SAPI, which is sadly not cross platform, and in Unreal Engine 3 we used Phonics for those. For voice over IP, Unreal Engine 2 used Speaks, and Unreal Engine 3, the solution is pending on the high-level networking layer, for example, if you run something like Panorama. Um, Speaks isn't easy to implement fallback on the PC, like the code is already there. And on consoles, we obviously use the vendor provider formats like Xbox Live or AV Chat. One thing uh, we found very useful in the past on the PC where it's usually push to talk, um, which requires full duplex sound cards, which are common, was to, we were always recording, we never stopped the recording, because back in the day, um, I'm not sure how it is nowadays, but there were kind of a lot of driver issues where if you stop recording, it would never start again. So we ended up uh, continuously recording, which allowed us to push to talk. Users tended to push the button and talk at roughly the same time, which meant it cut off the first like, maybe 300 milliseconds. But seeing that we were always recording when the user pushed, we actually went back in time and started transmitting or recognizing before the player pushed. That ended up working quite well.